Nikola Jokic takes criticism for not being athletically overpowering. However, those who label him as unentertaining don't appreciate this man being the most fundamental player since Tim Duncan. But while Jokic thrives off playing fundamentally sound, it's not like the reigning back-to-back -back MVP doesn't have any flashiness. Nikola's made nasty wraparound dimes a routine throughout his career. This strong side flex screen sees Jokic gather velocity for a pass with an extra dribble, which leads into a 20-foot behind-the-back bullet to find a cutting Murray who gets fouled. In the same quarter, this time from the post, despite Doncic doubling and four Mavericks in the vicinity, he whips another wraparound bouncer to Jeff Green for the and one. You'll see what Jokic did in his most recent historic showing against Charlotte and much more coming up. But right before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 10.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so subscribe and turn on notifications, and make sure you're still subscribed to this channel. Additionally, drop a thumbs up, and last but not least, follow my Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Let's get right back to the content. You can't forget, over Denver's last two playoff runs, Jokic and the Nuggets have been missing the services of number two option Jamal Murray. Last time the Serbian-Canadian connection were intact as a duo, the Nuggets got three wins away from advancing to the finals. Now, the Nuggets personnel around the Joker and the Blue Arrow is a lot better than it was back in the bubble. 2021's number 26 overall pick Bones Highland and 2022 trade acquisition KCP are both top 29 among all NBA players in three-point percentage. And another guy who this team didn't have in the bubble is Aaron Gordon, who's averaging 17 points on a near 70% true shooting clip. Let's talk about a trade that took place this offseason, which you didn't see many people talking about, but it's ended up having a fairly big impact. Washington sent KCP and Ish Smith to Denver in exchange for Monte Morris and Will Barton. Ish Smith was really good in the preseason, but he's been limited to 11 games in the regular season dealing with a calf injury early on, and then he lost his spot in the rotation. Looking back on it, and Denver getting Contavious Caldwell Pope makes them the winner of this trade. Directly after getting traded to the mile high, KCP signed a two-year $30 million extension. The reason the Pope makes Denver the winner of this trade is because he's posting a higher points per game average and significantly better efficiency from deep than either Barton or Morris for Washington. Caldwell Pope only trails Luke Kennard, Damian Lee, Malcolm Brogdon, and Isaiah Joe in three-point percentage. And it's not that Barton and Morris were the worst fit or that they're bad players but those two both thrive with the ball in their hands, whereas Caldwell Pope's much better moving without the basketball, and his catch and shoot ability fits in much better with the Nuggets personnel. Ish Smith has a similar playing style to Morris and Barton, and gives the team a solid option at PG in case of an injury. Then you've got Michael Porter Jr., who missed all but nine games last year, and this season, he's been out with a left heel strain since November 22nd. Porter's been injury prone throughout his career, but over the 16 outings where he has played in 22-23 so far, he seemed to have bought into his role of being this team's fourth scorer, a role which requires him to do a lot of spot-up shooting and occasionally create shots off the bounce when Denver needs a bailout. It's a role that's proved to suit him well. That said, MPJ's perimeter footwork defensively needs to get a lot better. Offensively speaking, he's knocking down a career second best, 42.7% of his three-pointers and attempting a hefty seven of them per night. Moving on to a player whose short time in the NBA has seen him quickly morph into one of the shiftiest bench scores the NBA has to offer, Nashawn Lee Busy Bones Highland. The product of Virginia Commonwealth has taken a steady leap in his sophomore campaign. As you can see, he's made progression in about every category. Most prominently, his three-point percentage has risen to a blistering 41.2%. The aggressiveness from Highland this year also shows up in the fact that he's playing just two more minutes per night than he did as a rookie, yet he's attempting about five more shots per game. He's a bit streaky, but the shooting range on the move from Bones is perfectly suited for the modern game. More than a quarter of his overall shots come via pull-up three-pointers, and he makes just under 42% of them. Jamal's the more well-known backcourt creator and is doing a decent job of bouncing back from his torn ACL, averaging around 18, 5, and 4 on 44, 34, 77 shooting splits. Not the numbers he put up in the bubble by any stretch, and not numbers which resemble the efficient masterpiece of a year Jamal put up in 2021 before getting hurt, but Jamal's durability post-major knee surgery should be respected. In his second 30-point game of the year against Utah on December 10th, 
Murray combined with Jokic to drop 61 points, 16 assists, and 19 rebounds on 24 for 39 shooting from the floor in a Denver W. Out of a sideline out of bounds play, Murray's gonna get this weak side DHO and slip screen from Jokic, and when isolated on Grant, he fakes a left-handed step back with a Hezzy. Watch how he head fakes to get Jeremy thinking he's either going to pass it or step back to his right, but instead goes momentum cross left and step back left to get more than enough space to drain the game winner. In the Nuggets game against LA, Jamal hit that exact same shot, but this time in LeBron's grill. Murray was 8 for 16 from the floor and dropped 23 points in that outing against the Lakers. That said, the Nuggets got blown out and Jamal limped off the court with an ankle injury. The next game in a win over Charlotte, Jamal shot just 2 for 11. It helps Jamal when the guy taking the pressure off him on a nightly basis in Nikola Jokic has the third most amount of triple doubles among active players with 80 of them. Crazy part about that is, the Joker is just 27 years old with 8 seasons under his belt. Jokic's 40 point, 27 rebound, 10 assist masterclass against Charlotte made him only the second player ever to tally at least those numbers in a game. Wilt Chamberlain did it 7 times. Despite being so young, Nikola's already surpassed Chamberlain as the greatest passing center ever, having posted the most single season assists per game of all time. That said, we don't talk enough about Nikola's bruising postgame. Nikola mixes up his passes with beastly back down attacks and shows off mind-blowingly nifty footwork and dexterity. From elusive spot up jumpers and fadeaways to his fundamental postgame consisting of an elite wherewithal to spot teammates out of double teams and a guard-esque low center of gravity, you can't help but appreciate Jokic's endlessly polished skill. Nikola's ever-improving ability to dominate down low has slowly made him the best player in this area. Jokic is number one among all players in points from the post per game, just ahead of fellow MVP candidate in Philadelphia's Joel Embiid. Rounding out the roster, Devon Reed and Jeff Green are a couple versatile combo forwards that provide defensive toughness, can guard one through five, and knock down threes. Green played a big part in Cleveland's run to the NBA Finals as one of LeBron's most consistent role players. Jeff's a glue guy in the locker room and still has a surprising amount of athleticism. A free agent pickup that got lost in the shuffle this past offseason was Bruce Brown moving on from Brooklyn and going to Denver. He's usually a four-man who spends a lot of time as the roller in the dunker spot, but what makes Brown so unique is that he can operate as the pick-and-roll ball handler as well. Brown can space the floor out with a 40% three-point stroke and is also an active defender on the perimeter. He's a decent screen navigator and at 6'4 with his 6'9 reach, that gives him a bothersome wingspan. Whether he was mentioned today or not, who deserves more attention on the Nuggets? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Two shoutouts next time. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.